Hello everyone, welcome back to jellymantis.exe. We're going to continue working on our Dwarven Treasure Chest Dice Box today. Uh, if you've watched my previous videos up to this point, you're pretty caught up. If you haven't watched it, you're pretty not caught up. We've got three main components here. We've got a interior dice rolling tray, we've got a lid, and then we've got the main box itself. Today we're just going to be working on some cosmetic things that are hopefully easy fixes and uh, nice and chill and if we have time we'll move on to the next steps. The first cosmetic adjustment I want to make is these two little dots that originally had kind of a brass nameplate uh, screwed onto the lid there. Uh, since we've removed that and recarved the whole thing, um, I want to fill in those holes. And how I'm going to do that might be a little bit unconventional, but I think it'll be okay. The correct way would have been, before we painted this, to put a little bit of wood putty in there and just kind of uh, press it down into these little holes. Uh, I don't have any wood putty, so what I'm going to do is use some super glue gel to try to fill in the holes and then just paint over the surface again. Hopefully that looks alright. Actually, no. I'm going straight in with the paint. What I'm going to do... Here's our Rust-Oleum Epic can that we bought. And I'm just going to put the smallest amount in here. Um, as you can see, I've kind of touched up some of it before, so I'm just going to give this a little, a little spray. Just enough to build up a little liquid, and then that's what we're going to paint with. Now we may end up having to do that a couple times to kind of build up a layer because as this dries it kind of thins out a little bit and also some of the paint is you could probably see is falling into the hole a little bit so we might do that a couple times throughout the video but I was just showing you that's how I'm going to fix that problem. The other change that I'm going to make is kind of all the grooves that we carved out the the runes and the belt groove and even the border around the edge uh, I want to give that a kind of a shadow effect, uh, put some black acrylic paint in there. I don't think it'll stick too well to this like gloss kind of smooth texture, uh, but I want to get some black in there just as a base. And then what we're going to do is a, an acrylic wash over the whole thing. Uh, and I think that'll kind of add some shadows and kind of break up this like chrome texture a little bit. So don't blink or you might miss it. Okay, we're going to take our acrylic wash uh, concoction, and we're going to do a little experiment. This is the bottom of the roll tray, um, so really this part won't get seen a whole lot, so I'm kind of using it as my experiment on all these first. So it's doing what I thought it was going to do, which is um, the hammered texture kind of has like this glossy kind of smooth finish to it and uh, I'm trying to get rid of that so I was hoping with the acrylic wash I could kind of put a little pattern on there like this maybe let it dry for a couple minutes and then try to like wipe it off just to add some depth and darkness and texture to the, kind of that glossy feel that it has right now so we'll let this sit for a few minutes and then we'll come back and wipe it off and see if it did anything I might have let that sit for about two minutes or so and I'm just going to try to dab off some of it. I'm not going to try to wipe, just so maybe some stays on there a little. So it didn't quite do what I was hoping it would do uh, as far as acting as a wash, but it did kind of add a little bit of texture on there, which um, I do like. So let's hit the rest of the tray, the lid, and the main box with the same kind of technique and we'll see what happens. Now our lid is very smooth because uh, we put so many coats of paint on there, so I'm going to hit it with just a 
clear acrylic uh, matte coating spray uh, just to give it a little bit of texture to bite onto. Just a little spritz. All right, now this thing has been a pain in the neck, so I'm gonna put it in timeout for about 10 minutes and let it think about what it's done. Kind of fudged up on that one a little bit. Um, if you wanna learn something about acrylic washes quickly, um, the purpose is for the darker shade of paint to fall into the cracks and crevices and kind of add uh, some ad additional depth which it kind of did on this um, which it kind of did on the front of this box here right you see it kind of falls into the braid it kind of fell into the runes and it kind of gives it like a weathered type of look um, the lid didn't have a lot of cracks and crevices, right? You basically have the runes and the belt grooves and that's it. Um, so when I put the paint on there, and I, it was my fault for letting it sit a little longer than I should have, uh, but it just kind of pulled up, right? So now it kind of gives it this like mildewy, like soaked in ink vibe versus this, which is like kind of more weathered and, and grimy and gritty. Uh, so I'll have to do something to kind of fix this up a little bit. For the next step, we're going to do a little bit of experimenting. I did some off camera, but let's do some together. We've got our little hardware handles and the little nipples that hold them in place and uh, the hinges that hold the lid to the main box. Uh, so I did a little bit of experimenting. It's got kind of a brass plating on here. So originally I tried to use distilled white vinegar and I let it sit for about a day uh, which kind of changed the color a little bit you can see here in this clip but it didn't completely remove the plating because after a few days of letting it dry um, it almost looks identical to how it did before the second experiment which you can see on this piece is uh, I tried sanding some of the plating off this is your sanded one, this is your not sanded one. And um, maybe that worked a little bit, but uh, it was also kind of a pain in the ass just because of the shape of this thing. And I'm gonna have to get in all the cracks and crevices. And I kind of didn't want to take the time to do that. So online I heard that oven cleaner can remove metal plating if you use like steel wool. So that's exactly what we're gonna try. We've got some Easy Off Oven Cleaner, heavy duty style. And then I bought this uh, Scrub Daddy family, but this one's a steel wool uh, sponge. So hopefully, hopefully that'll work. God damn it. Okay, so we gave it a good scrubbing. This is your scrubbed handle. This is your not scrubbed handle. Uh, the camera's not picking up on it super well, but there is a difference. But I damn near gave myself tendonitis trying to hold this little tiny handle and scrub it with steel wool. Uh, so we're going to go a different route. So after using the oven cleaner, this is what our hardware is looking like. Um, it kind of gave it like a black patina, sort of. I don't know if that's removing the coating or if that's something that was added to the hardware. But I'm not completely satisfied with it. So if I show you what it looks like on the box. So we've got our box here. I'm going to put together a little uh, set of hardware. Doesn't quite match right it, it does look cool with sort of like the black wear and tear but still there's way too much gold on this especially 
with the acrylic wash that we put on the box, we need it to be a lot darker, and that's how we're going to do this. I realized while editing this that I never mentioned what the actual plan was for the hardware. Um, so here it is. We're going to Cerakote the hardware. I thought an acrylic paint or a spray paint on the hardware would eventually just flake off or rub off with time. I wanted something a little more permanent. Uh, so luckily my father-in-law uh, is familiar with the Cerakote process. So that's what you're going to see in the following footage. But before we get there, um, I'm looking at a website, rmbarmsusa.com, uh, and they have a whole section about Cerakoting. Uh, what is Cerakote? Cerakote is a ceramic-based thermoset composite coating that is applied to the surface of firearms, knives, specialty products like tumblers and computer parts, and jewelry box hardware. It provides a protective finish and can be subjected to high temperatures without the risk of being melted off. Cerakote brand is composed of multiple color selections. We're going to go with black. How long does Cerakote last? Right, because this is kind of my main focus. If you're concerned about how long Cerakote lasts, don't be. It'll last for years on metal and plastic surfaces with proper care. Cerakote is corrosion resistant, scratch resistant, and chemical resistant, which creates high durability. Of course, the biggest factor in how long your Cerakote will last is how you use your product, firearm, or piece of equipment with the Cerakoting, um, Cerakote coating. So for jewelry box handles that honestly you might not even touch when you grab the jewelry box, you might just pick it up from the sides, uh, those handles are going to have almost no wear on them, so they should last for freaking ever. Um, what you're going to see in the following footage is how we Cerakoted at home. Uh, There's kind of a bead blast process which removed the brass plating. Uh, then we airbrushed the Cerakote um, mixture onto the pieces. And then uh, using kind of a homemade oven, we baked this Cerakote onto the parts. And uh, I'll show all that to you right now. So these are the results from the Cerakoting, and I could not be happier with the results. Um, really wasn't that tough of a process, and it came out looking great compared to the things that I was trying to do. Now, because of the lighting I'm using, it looks a little muted or a little brown, kind of, but this is a very deep black. So what do you say we go ahead and put this into the box? There's not much to it. Um, there are a couple of holes that go all the way through this sidewall here. So you uh, you would assemble your little hardware piece and then there's a bolt that goes through the wall into this hardware and that will hold everything in place. Okay, there's that. We'll just kind of get it started a little bit. That's going to look great. All right, let's do the same thing to the other side.
So I had an idea. Remember on our tray, uh, we removed these little handles. Uh, they were just like little metal handles with like a screw on the end of it um, that kind of fit in there and you could lift the tray out of the box. And I wanted to do something a little different instead of just making handles. So I was looking through my junk box. And if you watched my Jelly's Junk episode, you might be familiar with some of this stuff. But I have a little compartment for chains. Maybe maybe you're picking up what I'm putting down. I got a couple different chains. I think that will do the trick. And I think what I want to try to do is use these chains, drill this little hole all the way through the tray, and then somehow put put the chain into the hole, and then the chain will be how you pick up the lid, right, or the uh, tray. Kind of keeping with the uh, you know the dwarven aesthetic, you kind of have this little chain feeding into the hole, and either just draped across the middle or coiled up or whatever. And then when it comes time to lift up the tray, you just pull that chain, and the tray comes up with it. I think it's worth a shot. Why the hell not? There's a lot of drama in this moment because I'm asking myself to drill into the piece of wood that I've worked on for like two months for painting and uh, getting it all squared away and now I'm going to drill through it on a whim because I had some crazy idea. Uh, so I'm using an eighth inch drill bit which if you're curious is big enough for a toothpick to freely travel through the wood. So it's not a tiny hole. Let's see how it turns out. It worked.
Damn it. Damn it. God damn it. All right, and that's where this episode is going to end. Um, we'll pick up in the next episode, which is probably going to be the final episode, where we'll do the interior lining. Uh, we'll kind of put the whole box back together. Um, we'll get it cleaned up real nice and do some uh, product shots. And that should basically wrap this thing up. I mean, we're so close to the end. I just need another couple weeks to dedicate some time to finish it up, and then we'll be done. So uh, leave a like if you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe. I got a bunch of stuff planned for the future. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.